Alright, this is uh, something interesting. So I got the uh, 230 watt solar panel hooked up to the 10 to 30 300 watt Sun G grid tie inverter. So, got pretty full sun. Running the panel at it's under load, it's hitting you know, it's volts. Putting in 93 watts, 94 watts, almost 100 watts. So if I hook this to the 22 to 60 grid tie inverter, it'll produce twice that. Uh, here's the panel. Just lying flat on the back. Alright, so uh, now I'll hook it up to the, the bigger grid tie inverter, 22 to 60, 500 watt. Okay, so now we got it hooked up to the 500, 22 to 60, and we're hitting 175 watts. Yeah, you know, we're 24 volts now. 180, oh, 190, 191. All right, it's pretty direct sound, that's 201 watts. Twice the wattage now. Just because it's going at 25 volts. I guess it has to do with the amperage output of the panel, because it can only do eight amps about. So, that maxes it out at average, so if you can lose voltage, then you can get more watts. But here's the setup, same panel. And now we're busting out twice the wattage. Seems like if I could control the volts, even boost the volts up a couple more volts, then I would get even more out of it. But yeah, doing like 200 watts now, and it's a 230 watt panel, so 200 watts out of a 230 watt panel is about 90% efficiency, which is about what the inverters run. So I'm right there. So yeah, I just thought I'd do a little video on this, it's pretty interesting. Optimize your voltage on solar panels, I guess. I'm new to this whole solar thing. I'm a windmiller. A new American revolution has begun. Not against the forces of a colonial kingdom, but a rebellion against an oppressor that has risen among us. It is not a foreign invasion we have to fear. Rather, the threat of a force within our nation that has usurped what was once a dream of having the greatest democracy ever known to man. We now live in a world where the population has grown exponentially and the planet is running out of resources to sustain us all. We in the inner city and those struggling in the suburban ghettos may not realize it yet, but make no mistake, the people who control the technology and run every enterprise that makes up our world have seen this coming for a long time. The ideas of renewable energy, global warming, the idea of collectively working were purposefully bought out, derailed, demonized, or corrupted in favor of an economic structure designed by a monetary caste system. In a desperate attempt to convince us that we need to maintain that extravagant existence, they've pretended we might share in their dream 
that we can justify any inhumanity in its name. Out of this blind ignorance was born the curse of slavery. Many of the founders of this nation were themselves Masons. That is not a left-wing or right-wing conspiracy theory. It is a widely known and accepted fact. So then explain to me how a nation founded by men who not only understood the long and complicated history of Europe, but also that of Africa, could permeate such a lie in convincing the American public that one race of men was superior and one inferior. When in fact we know that all the early men, the people who created civilization, every aspect of what we see today, the foundation of all modern human life, were from Africa. The greatest cowardice, of course, came not with slavery itself, unfortunately, but with the excuses for slavery. For if America had been as brave as the Roman Empire and all other empires that had come after her and claimed, no, we were just stronger and that's why we took you, then when slavery was over, racism would have probably followed in suit. But instead, it was the social lie the religious lie that was told, that stayed in the minds of people, that separated one human being from another, in order to distract us from the issues of class and freedom, they created issues around religion and race to dominate the world for centuries to come. Some claim that they respect the culture of life in this country. They cry out for the indignity of children that are slaughtered before they are born. But God has not penetrated their souls, for they have no empathy, nothing in their cold hearts, for the hundreds of thousands of lives we have taken in our wars overseas, for that which they call collateral damage, which are the burnt and damaged children of the world. They have no prayers for them, only snide commentary on the internet, and laughter in their hearts, and yet you claim to be one with God. <laughs> we talk about immigration in this country. Might doesn't make right, ladies and gentlemen. It just makes right now. What we are saying to the rest of the world is one day when America grows weak, one day when her legions falter, on a day when her economy crumbles, China, Russia, Europe, whatever power has arisen, all you have to do is come here and conquer us in a few military excursions and then you too can set up shop here and in a hundred years you can tell every red-blooded American no, you are an illegal human being. I am the true citizen. I have all the rights. You have no rights. Maybe you forgot how you got this country. Maybe you take for granted the blood, the sweat, the tears that the people who live in practical serfdom shed every day. For we may not run America, but we make America run. We talk about the law, yet how many indignities have been legal in the past? How many treaties with Native American people have we broken? How many international laws have we violated? And speaking of laws, how can a corporation be regulated by a government that is funded and controlled by corporations? How can there be accountability for people who see a profit margin above the lives of Americans, above the lives of human beings in other countries? We have taken the soul out of ourselves and placed them inside machines. My words, of course, will be marginalized, demonized in typical fashion. Anytime you dare to question the power structure, they say you hate America. No. I love this country. I see its beauty every day in its people. And I love it a lot more than those that have abandoned the American worker, that have chose to exploit and try and take away every single benefit that she has. Those that attempt to make excuses for every atrocity committed in the name of supposed freedom. Those who demand accountability from everyone but offer none themselves. Who favor contracts over lives, who favor invasion and control over organic democracy overseas. The greatest flaw that any intelligent person has is to think that they're smarter than everyone else. 
And so, as the government has planted its spies amongst us, we have planted our spies among them. They have infiltrated every branch of the American government. They have retrieved names, data, hard numbers, the paper trail that will expose those that truly control this country, those that control the political parties, those that control the oil industry, the energy, those that stand behind the companies, faceless, whose names have never been revealed until today.